which will be fulfilled in their own time. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he lingered so long in the temple. But when he came out, he could not speak to them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. For he beckoned on to them and remained speechless. And so it was as soon as the days of his service were completed that he departed to his own house. Now after those days his wife Elizabeth conceived and she hid herself five months saying, Lord thus has dealt with me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among people. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God. Amen. So, we have officially started our Christmas season. It's truly a joyous season. It's a season filled with so much happiness and joy. We go around, we see the Santa Clauses, we see the Christmas tree, we hear the carols. So, just like Christmas is very special to the world, it's also very special to our church. This is a season where the church takes us step by step, miracle by miracle, until we eventually arrive to the ultimate miracle of all, of having God come and be among us from a virgin. In this morning Mass, we see our first miracle in the Christmas season, which is the receiving of the news of a new prophet, who is named going to be called John the Baptist. The story begins with a priest, his name is Zacharias, and that priest had a wife, her name was Elizabeth. Both were very old of age. And unfortunately, they did not have any children. <clears throat> During this time in the Old Testament, any couple who do not have children is considered bad news because it indicates that the Messiah will not be coming from their offspring. So it was very, very shameful for both Elizabeth and Zacharias. Anyways, Zacharias, it was his turn as a priest to go and raise incense in the altar, similar to what Abunas nowadays do when they take the shoria and they raise incense at the altar. So, when he was inside, Zacharias saw an angel appear at the right side of the altar. And the angel told him, your prayer has been heard. You and your wife will have this child you have been asking for. This child they have been asking for and praying for for a long time. And this son that you're about to have, you're going to call him John. <coughs> he will be the source of happiness to you and to many. And he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we will learn more about that in next Sunday's readings. Up to here, the story was fantastic. It quickly takes a downhill, a, a downturn. Zacharias went to the angel and says, how could this be? I am and my wife are a very old couple. And how is it possible for us to have a child in this age? Gabriel, who was the angel who was standing at the altar, he told him, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God, and I was sent to you to speak to you and bring these glad tidings. Now, since you do not believe me, you will stay mute until this child is born. The angel left. Zacharias, if you can imagine, was in a state of a shock. He hung out there for a while, 
people started to wondering what is going on inside. Why is he taking so long? He eventually got out. He couldn't speak or address the people. So he had to, with his hands, he had to kind of gesture, like, you know what, yes, go ahead. And he dismissed him. Zacharias went back home, and sure enough, Elizabeth conceived. So there are many beautiful lessons in this story. We see how righteous parents, righteous parenting, can bring forth amazing prophets. A person who Christ describes there is, has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. So maybe for parents, or people who are about to be parents, maybe we need to study the life of Zacharias and Elizabeth to know what does it mean to be righteous before the Lord. We also see angels, God's messengers, bringing down messages from heaven down to, to earth and taking messages from earth going back to heaven. And the beauty of our church preserves this concept of angels. At the end of the liturgy, what Abuna does, he takes water and says, oh, angel of this sacrifice, flying up to the highest, carrying these prayers, remember us before the Lord that he may forgive us our sins. However, I would like today to focus our attention to what makes a prayer heard. Zacharias and Elizabeth has been praying in this story for a child and got answered. So what, is it, what are the qualities of an answered prayer? For this, I will borrow a few verses from the Gospel of St. Mark. Mark chapter 11, 24. So I'm going to read it nice and slow, so please pay attention. This is the key of answered prayers. I'm sure all of us have prayers that would love to be answered. So this is a prescription on how to have an answered prayer. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive. That your Father in heaven may also forgive you. You guys get that? Yeah. Thank you for the answer, whoever that was. So, I would like to simplify it even more, if I may dare. When you pray, believe and forgive. When you pray, believe and forgive. Christ outlines the two most important elements of an answered prayer. To believe and to forgive. Let's talk about believing. Believe. Believe that you are standing before God. Believe that you're standing before God. You're standing before your creator, the creator of this universe. Believe that he's there, standing, listening. It, says, it sure does say a lot about our believing of him in our prayers by the way we stand, by the way we are praying. It gives us an indication if we truly do believe. Imagine believing before, uh, standing before uh, an important personality, whether it be a president or a queen, how would that look like? And we compare it how we stand and address our Creator. This is why in the Holy Liturgy, when we say, the Shir Buna says, that you are he who is the cherubim praise and the seraphim with six eyes, stand before you, immediately the deacon says, stand up for prayer. This is not something to talk about dogmatic. This is a reminder for us people, everyone. We are standing in front of someone who's the cherubim and the seraphim are standing before with trembling and fear. Pay attention, stand properly. 
believe that you are standing before God. That's the first point. Second point. Believe that you are talking to Christ as a child. Believe that you are talking to God as a child. A small child, a clueless child, a helpless child. This is one of the most warming things about Christianity, that we can our address our God as children, and he commanded us that when we pray, we say, Father. When you pray, say, Our Father. Here you go. Believe that you are a child. And because you are a child, you can ask for anything. So, believe as a child that you can ask for anything. You're standing before the one who moves the whole universe, who created the universe. It's an opportunity for you to ask for anything you want. Here's the trick though. Here is the disclaimer. There are things that God would love to obey and things that God could take some time to obey or to listen or to hear. Let me try to help you to illustrate. A lot of us here are parents. Right? Which request would you be more willing to provide for your child when they ask? Candy or a book? Candy or a book? As a parent? What? Book. Why? It's knowledge. It's long term. It's for the future. It's for what is he about to come? Candy is just for the moment. Christ himself, this is the same thing that goes with our spirituality, with the way we ask. So, if we ask God for money, which is a grown-up's version of candy, God might not provide right away. However, ask him for wisdom. Ask him for wisdom. He will start working on that right away. He will put you through scenarios. He's going to put you through difficult choices. He's going to send you messages. He's going to send you teachers. Christ himself said this, do not ask for bread. People ask for bread. I provide the bread. That's given. Ask first for the kingdom. Ask first for heaven. Another example, you might ask for a good job. God might delay a bit. Ask him instead to love my brother, my sister. Lord, I'm having trouble with this person. My heart is too narrow. I can't accept them. They're very difficult. They're very mean. They're very different. Ask for that. Yes, God will be more than happy to provide because this is love. No kingdom of heaven without love. So, what do you say? Believe that you're standing before God. Before that you're talking to him as a child, believe that you can ask for anything. Believe that in his promises. Believe in God's promises. When we pray, we need to reiterate God's promises. When we pray, say this. God, you said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened. Lord, I believe you. Here I am knocking. Here I am knocking. Knocking for you to accept me. Knocking for you to forgive me. Knocking for you to change me. Believe in his promise when he said, there is temptations in this world, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. <clears throat> believe. The last thing to believe in is to believe in God's attributes. When we ask to 
anyone, when we ask, how would you describe God? He's merciful, he's compassionate, he's kind, he's powerful. Believe that. When you pray, believe he is a compassionate God. Believe that he is a God of the sinners. Believe he is God does not turn away the sinner, but rather he returns and he lives. And this is something that Satan fights viciously. He works by fighting the concept of believing. Believing who God is. He says, you're unworthy. You're a sinner. You're fallen. You're broken. You're too bad. You're messed up. You're too injured. You're too dirty. When he says that, he says, nope. That's not what God said. When God wanted to symbolize how he is, he gave us the prodigal son. Someone who went in the filth, he came back without an explanation. He hugged him, washed him up, put on a new robe, and had him return back again. He is the God of the Samaritan woman who finds any excuse to find good in us. He is the God of the 99, leaving the 99 sheep and going after one that is lost. This is our God. Believe that. So what are the two attributes? We said believing and forgiving. We finished believing. Let's talk a little bit about forgiving. For our prayers to be answered, there are two requirements. Believing, and we talked a bit about that, and forgiving. This is what we're about to cover. Forgiveness is a requirement for accept, accepted prayers. When God, Christ himself, established the bare minimum prayer, he said what? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Dot, dot, dot. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. It's a requirement. It's a requirement in our prayers to forgive. So when you forgive, God forgives. We become reconciled. We become reconnected. He starts listening. You're not forgiving. You're automatically unplugged. And you'll find your prayers are weak. Are, are not going anywhere. And honestly, thinking about it, forgiving is, is honestly worth it. If you think of, of the consequences of not forgiving, if you're not forgiving, we will not be forgiven, which is a death sentence. We have erased the name for eternity. Forgiveness Forgiving my brother's trespasses is all I need for Christ to completely wipe out my sins. Forgive and your sins are automatically wiped out. And this is why the church lives these words in the liturgy. We have a special prayer called the prayer of reconciliation. Before coming and partaking of God, there's a special prayer. It says, go and greet one another. Do not go and greet your buddy. It's for greeting the one who have hurt you. Where you before God and say, Lord, I forgive. I am ready to be united with them and with you. Let us all put this verse before us. Whenever you pray, forgive, believe, and forgive. These are Christ's own words. Let us all pray, believing in his fatherhood, his care, and his help, so that we may become his true children, and glory be to God forever. Amen. In the Muslim Milad, will Aida be very any very special علشان هينتهي بأكبر معجزة 
وهي معجزة إن الله جه وتجسد من عذراء. طبعا حضرتكوا كلكم تعرفوا القصة بس باختصار عبارة عن القصة عن زكريا كان كاهن متجوز أليصابات وكانوا متقدمين جدا في السن وما كانش عندهم أولاد. جت القرعة إن إن زكريا الكاهن يرفع بخور على المذبح فهو كان جوه بيرفع بخور ظهر لي ملاك على اليمين وقال له أنا جبرائيل أبشرك إن طلبتك ربنا وافق عليها وهيبقى عندك ولد وهيبقى اسمه يوحنا طبعا حضرتكوا عارفين ان زكريا قال طب ازاي ده يحصل انا كبير ومراتي كبيره ازاي حاجه زي كده تحصل؟ قال له طيب انت مش هتتكلم لغايه لما الولد ده يتولد بالفعل زكريا طلع وبعد كده قال صبات كانت حامل في ال في ال في القصة دي فيها حاجات حلوة كتيرة بس أنا عايز أركز في نقطة مهمة، إزاي صلاتنا اللي نطلبها، الطلبة اللي نطلبها من ربنا، إزاي ربنا يستجاب ليها؟ عشان كده أنا هحاول آخد من إنجيل معلمنا ماري مرقص إصحاح رقم 11 24 بيقول إيه؟ لهذا أقول لكم كل ما تطلبونه أنتم تصلون آمنوا بأنه لكم فيكون لكم. وإذا هممتم بالصلاة فأخفروا أولا إن كان فيكم أي شيء ضد شخص آخر حتى يخفر أبوكم الذي في السماء سلتكم هنا بني يسوع المسيح حط لنا المنهج للصلاة المقبولة إيه؟ الصلاة المقبولة محتاجة عاملين العامل الأول إنك أنت تؤمن وإنك أنت تخفر تؤمن تؤمن بإيه؟ نؤمن إن إحنا واقفين قدام ربنا تؤمن ان احنا واقفين قدام ربنا، واحنا واقفين في الكنيسة. 